So hello again everybody. Uh, I want to apologize in advance for any background noise on this. It's a Monday morning in Florida. We've got the commuter train running and we've got some sandhill cranes barking like mad down here, but they're beautiful birds. In any case, this is a follow-up to the DIY do-it-yourself toe-in adjustment. Back with a 78 Toyota pickup long bed. And I'm going to do a little different this time. It's, I'm going to use some blocks to take some measurements front and rear on the front tires. The front and back of the front tires. Make, that would make more sense. And you just need a measuring tape. I've got a square just in case I need it. Really just use the ruler to line up the blocks with the inside edge of the outmost groove. Now, since I did the tie rods on this, which I do have a video up on, check my other videos. I did the idler arm and the pitman arm on this, which was a bear, and I did not video it. Sorry about that, but oof. <laughs> it was all I could do just to get those done. Pitman armor especially was just a bear to get off. And I've also got four brand new tires. Now, word about that. I was running 185s on this because the tire shop a long while back told me that was the equivalent of the old bias ply size that was on here. No, 195 is ideal. 185 is the minimum. You can go 205 on these rims and they're 7 by 14 rims. So a little bit extra height doesn't hurt. These are also 70s instead of 75 aspect ratio. Give it a little more tread patch. Be good. Uh, tire shops are going to want to... You do a, get alignment when you get new tires. You don't have to. It's, if the vehicle's tracking straight, drive straight, doesn't pull, there's no issues with the front end of the steering, you don't have to. If it does, it's wise to do it. Just putting it up on the rack and having them look around, it might reveal some damaged front end parts that need to be replaced, and those have to be replaced before you get it aligned. So I got new front end parts and new tires, so I'm just gonna recheck this again. Uh, with the string method, video I have up I did check and adjust this to 1 16th of an inch toe in each side for 1 8 total the spec on this up until 83 I believe is 0.24 of an inch total so that's about an eighth per side and that's with the old uh, bias plies with radials you can go less toe and it'll work just fine. I researched this heavily. Hello, got a visitor. How you doing? Two visitors. <laughs> guys gonna help me out with this, are you? Puppies. So, that's the deal with that. Um, radials, you can leave it alone or run a little bit less toe in if you want, it's up to you. Uh, I looked through all the hot rod threads, journals, forums online. For the most part, you can run the standard spec as it was back in the day when the vehicle came with bias supply tires. They tend to do fine from people say, talking about their experience. Some say they tighten it up and it does a little bit better with radials. If you tighten it up a little bit, like from an eighth, eighth to a sixteenth. Your choice, I say. Whatever you want to do. It's your vehicle. You do what you want to do. So, here's what we're going to do. Got that block lined up with that groove, just like that. So get a good look at that. And I've got a block over here. This works with four. I only have three. I'm just going to move this one back and forth. I'm going to measure from the inside of that groove to the inside of this groove on the front. And I'm going to do it again on the back. The difference is going to be your total toe-in. Remember this. You have to divide that by two to find out what each one is, if you need to know that. If, as long as you can get a total spec, you can do it this way, no problem. Just whenever you're looking at alignment specs in a manual or any printed source that's reliable, just make sure you understand the difference. Whether the spec is saying it's total toe or individual toe. Really important. Otherwise, you can get this way off, and it's not going to handle well. So, I'm going to get busy. Okay. So, I've got the tape measure hooked to the other side, and the end of the block. And I had to check it with a square. It's nice and square. 
and I've got it over here. Uh, as you can see, that looks to be about 55 and an eighth on the front. Now on the back, I've got that other side hooked. There's that brand new idler arm in there. And let's see what we've got. Oh, eyeball here. Need all the help I can get. Magnifying glass. Okay. So there's that. And that looks the... Let's see. There's the groove. Right about there. Now that looks to be, to me, to be 54 and three quarter. So, let's see. 55 and an eighth, 54 and a and three quarter. A quarter is 0.25. An eighth is 0.125. So, that's out by at least an eighth. So, what I'm going to need to find out here is which is which. That's why, this, see, this tape, tape measure method doesn't work that well sometimes. One could be out, one could be right, you never know. With the strings, you can measure each side independently. And that way you know which one is which. This one's an eighth out, this one's a sixteenth out, and you can turn your adjustment sleeves and you can equalize them. Which, by the way, right there, around the tie rods, there's your adjustment sleeve right in the middle. It's got some bolts inside, some clamps that hold it tight. You have to loosen that up and rotate that one way or the other to push the back of this tire in or out, and that changes your toe. All right. So that's pretty much what I got going on. I'm going to do another string alignment just to be sure because I like things accurate. Yeah, you can uh, you can do it this way and set it up so you have a quarter inch total. But without knowing which side is which, here's the failure of the other videos that I've seen about this. You may have the right toe, but they might be pointed to the right or the left. And not, you know, dead straight. Toe in. You could have, like, too much on this one and this one over here, and it's still going to pull right on you. That's why you've got to have equal. So, with the uncertainty of the side-to-side -side measurement, which might be better for bigger trucks, but, again, I like things more accurate. I'm going to go back to our string method here. And just to reiterate some important points I found after doing this a couple times. Here's, oop, check that again. <laughs> there we go. Check your, put your jack stands up as square as you can get them up and making sure they go beyond the vehicle. Front and rear. Okay. I like to put my string on the inside because it's just easier. You can tell that they're square when the line is touching the whole side and it's not out like this. Okay. And I measure back here. I measure the outside or the inside. Outside's easier because I can just lay the tape measure on there, hook that side, come over and measure this. 64 and a half inches works for this. And come up front. And do exactly the same 64 and a half inches. Okay. You put the leave the caps on, take the caps off, whatever you want to do. You take the caps off. If it sticks out, you can get closer. It doesn't matter. You'll see. And of course, I move them out before adjusting the side to side. Move them away from each other to make the, str the string nice and tight. So I have less variance. 
As long as it's not super windy, you're okay. Just make sure the front string does not touch the hubcap or the tire sidewall. It has to be in the air like that. All right. Now, the measurements you take, either side does not have to be the same. What do I mean by that? Okay. There's my clean side of my metal ruler. Okay. Measure from the rim out to the string. That's three quarters. That's the front. Front right. Front left. Measure. It's almost an inch. They do not have to be the same. As long as these stands are exactly the same width apart, front and back. You know these two strings or lines are parallel to each other. They're perfect. So you got a perfect 90 degree here. And you could measure inside from string to string the whole length of it. And it's always going to measure exactly 64 and a half on this setup. Okay? It doesn't have to be 64 and a half. Just whatever works for the width of your vehicle. All right? This happens to work with this truck. So there we go. So shoot from the top. And that is dead on three quarter. And back here, inch and a half. Am I reading this right? I'm not reading this right. That's inch and a half. <laughs> this is what happens when you work on a Monday morning. Inch and a half. And just a little bit less than an inch and a half, about a sixteenth. So that held because I set that for a sixteenth last time. Oh yeah, make sure you don't have any wheel weights in your way. If you've got a full hub cap, just pop them off with a screwdriver or however you take them off. That is two. Ugh. Right between a half and three quarters, so uh, let's see. My math is also slow on a Monday morning, <laughs> so I also have a lot of hard time reading this ruler sometimes. It's almost, it's just shy of one and three quarter. I'd say it's sixteenth short. And that is not good. Two and three sixteenths. Now, about one and three quarter, two and three sixteenths. That means the back is further in than the front. This is towed out. Okay. Then have to do this mandatory. Think about your toes. Okay, if you're towed out, you're like this. If you're towed in, you're like this. Rear wheel drive vehicles, you want a little bit of toe in. Because when you start going down the road, the force pushes the tires out and they go straight. Front wheel drive is different. They either have zero toe or they have a little bit of toe out. Because the power is being applied to them, they want to come in. Okay, but for rear wheel drive, you need toe in. So that is way out. Just rechecking. One and a half, eighth, one, one and a half plus three sixteenths, eight, nine, ten, sixteenths, four, eighteen, math, 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 one and three sixteenths, no, can't be twelve sixteenths, gotta be eleven sixteenths, one and eleven sixteenths, okay. Two and three sixteenths. Five and three is eight. It's out half an inch. That's not good. So I'm going to crawl under, under here and loosen up the adjuster sleeves and turn it so it kicks the back of this tire out and the front in. 
so I'll get on that. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, whenever you're going to adjust your toe, you need something to lock your steering wheel straight. Because if you don't, you could adjust this and it could turn the wheel. I've got a couple of adjustable poles going from the floor up until the corner of the cab. And just under the crossbars to hold it, it's locked in pretty good. So if I just stuff down here, it shouldn't move. And plus the grocery bags under the tires really help because they slip and slide back and forth really easy. So it shouldn't transmit any force to the wheel. But if you, if you don't do this, you're going to end up with a crooked steering wheel. Fair warning. Okay, so I did an initial adjustment on the adjuster sleeve. Up under there. Ooh wee. Now we got. Get up. We've got what? We've got one and seven eighths. Sorry about the jerkiness. Coffee still running. It's about two. So that's got a one eighth inch toe out. Which means the front of the tire is more out to the right. It's on an angle like that. So I gotta run that adjuster a little bit more. I did learn on this because the threads are so fine, the adjustment on it, a quarter turn of the adjusting sleeve is about a sixteenth of an inch. So basically, I need three quarters of a turn and I should be on. See how that works. So after a lot of back and forth adjusting, got to be patient with it. We've got just about one and 15 sixteenths. And two inches. So it's a sixteenth less than the front, so the toe is in one sixteenth, just the way it should be. Now I went ahead and checked the other side, and it's actually coming up even. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that out and get it nice and even with this one. You could also do a sixteenth. Okay, so got this side done. It's going to be a little tough to show because yeah, the wind is blowing. This measuring is really getting in my brain. And it's about one and a quarter, almost one and five sixteenths. Punch back. And that's about a sixteenth more than one and five sixteenths. So I'm going to call that close enough. As long as it's got a little bit of toe in, I'm not going to be all that concerned. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that's the southern thing. Woo wee. So there we go. Got it done. No problem. Basic tools, ratchets, 12 millimeter. I needed a 13 millimeter as well because for some reason there's a 13 millimeter nut on one of the 12 millimeter bolts. Yeah, well, <laughs> old cars. Welcome to old car, Bill. So that's what I got for you this time. Probably won't get to the carburetor adjustment today because it's fixing the storm here within an hour. And I'm not going to have enough time to do that. So I will get to it and I will attempt to video it so I can post it for you. But this, that's your follow up on this. Again, I think I pretty well covered it. If there's anything I missed, anything you're not certain about or clear about, let me know. Be glad to answer questions on it. Last time I did it, Track, track straight. I'm expecting it to track straight and even straighter now since I've got all new front end in here. This front end is basically totally rebuilt. So, good to go. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Yep. When I say it's fixing the storm, it's fixing the storm. <laughs>